I'm Mark Brodsky. I'm a physician interested in the care of performing artists. I'm here with Tom today. Good to meet you, Tom. Nice to meet you. Tom, can you tell me a little bit about your neck pain and tension? Uh, it's, uh, it's a thing I've had for a long time. It's, it's just a uh, stiff neck. You know, I'm losing, you know, this range here. And uh, it comes and it goes. I don't even live with it. <laughs> and you're a bass player. Right. Does this affect your music at all or the sound of your music? Uh, I get an argument from the guys I work with, but <laughs> I don't think so. So you, it's basically a lifestyle. Um, you, you feel like it's not affecting your music, but it's affecting it's your quality of life. Okay, you know, great. Because you know, you're thinking about it a lot. Yeah. yeah. A lot of musicians actually come in with problems that aren't necessarily related to their music, but really affect their quality of life. So it's important to be able to oh, give relief for that as well. Right, right. What, how long have you had your neck pain for? Oh, I don't know, maybe 10 years, 15 years, I don't know. I, I started uh, uh, working uh, mostly on, in the French Quarter on Bourbon Street about almost 30 years ago. In those days, it was a six-hour shift, six days a week. I'm down to five days, five hours, but still, all, I think all those years, either standing or sitting with that bass, it's, uh, it takes a toll. Sounds like there was a lot of repetitive trauma over the years, you yeah. know, w with playing the bass. Did you have any acute traumas like uh, car accidents or That's, falls uh, out or anything like that? W when I was approached about this, I didn't really understand uh, what they were getting at that, that it, I might have done it playing music, but I think these are old injuries. Maybe, uh, it aggravates it, you know. I have a have. I got bad stage fright, and I have a have a, a lean, and I, I duck down when I play. Maybe over the years, it's had something to do with it. I don't know. Usually, neck pain is a cumulative result of a, a lot of different things. Um, have you gone to any medical doctors or professionals or practitioners of uh, for, for your neck pain? Not for my neck, for my back. Okay. And what have you done for your back? Uh, two years ago, I, <coughs> I got uh, I had nerve problems that, that took me. I I couldn't walk, so I had to go to the uh, to the uh, doctor f for that. And uh, they cat scanned me and did some other things. And and uh, as it turns out, I I, I have the, the crushed disc thing in my back there, and uh, that <coughs> that's caused me a lot of problems. Okay, that's great. Um, you know, whenever there's a pain condition that's been going on a number for probably more than two weeks, it's probably good to get that checked out. Other red flags for going to a doctor to check out a pain condition would be a fever or trauma or pain worse than you would expect, pain worse than usual. Have, have you done any treatments for your, for your back pain? Uh, I, was, I was offered the therapy, uh, but I, I asked if I could do it myself, and I started swimming about three times a week. I do a mile about three times a week. Uh, and it's, uh, it's brought it under control. That's wonderful, because uh, really the foundation of prolonged relief is self-care, and things like exercise and diet and sleep and stress management, anger management, uh, social support. Uh, you look like you have a, cl a good range of buddies that you, um, in the music industry oh, and otherwise. Yeah, yeah, sure. um, so it's a, we, we say get a hug a day, that's good for uh, mm -hmm. social support. And also acupressure, which can be very helpful for pain, especially neck pain, um, which, we'll, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, so things that uh, a doctor might be able to provide, actually, are or what, we, what we would provide is in addition to kind of lifestyle coaching, there's some techniques, there's something called trigger point injection, which is taking a small needle with a drop of lidocaine, basically, uh, touching any of these kind of knots you might have in your neck and upper back area. Um, can ca can uh, cause dramatic kind of improvement, as well as acupuncture. Um, there's some complementary um, procedures that uh, you know, so long as they're done by a credentialed provider, can be very helpful. Mm -hmm. And even some medications. Uh, have you tried any medications for pain? Uh, yes, I had to stop taking them. They, they made me dizzy. I couldn't take them. Yeah, that's a problem with the medications. They can have side effects. Um, so it's important to you know, make sure that there's medications that are safe without, without side effects. So let's get into some uh, things that you can do for yourself to uh, improve your neck pain. And what I'd like to do is show you some uh, acupressure points. So can I have you stand up for a second? So, so the first thing I'd like to do is examine your range of motion, kind of of your arms. Can you lift your arms in the air like that? 
Okay, that's pretty good. And then when you, let me have you stand straight and turn your head to the right and left as far as it can go comfortably. Okay, and then the other way. So it looks like a little less to the left. Uh, yeah, the, for some reason or other, it's always a problem on the right hand side of my neck. Okay, when you, when you turn to the left, are you feeling pain on the right or uh, tur turn your head and show me where you're feeling discomfort. Well, it's always right in this strip right here. Okay, and what about when you turn to the right? Is there any to discomfort? The right is when not you... so bad. Okay. I'm going to push on some points in your shoulder area, if that's All okay. Right, sure. And we'll start with the right side. So when I push there, is anything kind of tender in this area? No, I can feel it. I mean, it's a little sore, but it... How about right there? That feels like that's, a good muscle that's, knot. Uh, that's where it's at. Right? Okay, <laughs> that's where it's at. So this is where we would do like a trigger point. We'd take a small needle, put in that area, and basically the self-healing mechanisms of the body make that point release its tension. Okay. And then what about this side? No, that's, that's, that's this really side's less. Right, and, exactly. and just feeling your neck actually, I can feel like a nice band of muscle here that's tender and this one feels a lot softer and healthier. I'm going to push another spot if that's okay in your neck. Um, can you let your chin fall to your chest? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to push in a point right here called the splenius muscle. And let me know if we hit a good spot that's tender. It's not so tender as the base there. So that's not as tender as this spot right here. Mm -hmm. so, so what I would diagnose you with um, after we would do a full ner neuro, uh, nerve exam and you know watch you play your instrument, make sure there were no kind of incoordination problems that can uh, be a condition that's actually caused by the brain, um, we would want to kind of check out a full exam and any kind of relevant x-rays and as well as a physical exam to make sure your neck pain was coming from something other than the muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we would go ahead and recommend a trigger point there to release the tension and then we, we would teach you to do things yourself. Uh, one of those is acupuncture or acupressure, excuse me. So let me have you face me. Okay. And the places we would push, so let me have you Stand up straight and turn your head to the right and the left as far as it goes comfortably. Great. And have you kind of stand like this. And I'm going to push a point here um, right before the crease of your elbow in the front of the arm right up on top of the bone there. So why don't you let your arms relax and take a deep breath and uh, turn your head to the right and the left. Kind of stand up straight and turn your head and the left side and take a deep breath and turn your head to the right and the left again and the left side good so basically this is a point that not only releases tension in the forearms but also tr uh, connects the upper neck and back area um, another point I want to show you is right here so I want you to kind of interlock your fingers um, put them behind your neck and see if you can find a spot right where you were showing me. Put your thumbs a little bit higher, right thumbs? here. Thumbs? Yeah, right in there, kind of where you were showing me that was sore. It's usually right here. Can you feel that right yes, there? It's right there. Right there, right? You got it. So put your thumb kind of right in that spot and um, let your chin drop and let your elbows drop and take a deep breath. Great. And stand up. The, the last point is actually right on top of that trapezius where we pushed, so you can mm -hmm. let your arms down. And then um, take your fingers and just kind of let them push down on this spot right here. Uh, cross over like a seat belt. Mm -hmm. Cross over like a seat belt like this oh. uh, with this arm, one at a time. Perfect. And just let your arm kind of drop, no tension. And uh, is that the spot where I pushed before? Yeah. Yeah. So you would want to do those three spots and take a breath in, out, and that's a very nice breath. You're using your diaphragm. You're filling your you know, okay. tummy with air rather than breathing with your chest. Yeah. And let me, I'm going to feel a few more points here, kind of turn this way, and uh, going to push right here. Is anything tender in here, or is this area okay? I get spasms there, but it's not bothering me right now. Okay. So why don't you have a seat? <clears throat> For those areas, those hard-to-reach points, two tennis balls and a stocking and leaning up a walk against the wall can kind of deactivate those points. Okay. So um, 
Do you do any stretches or regular exercise? Uh, I do uh, just push-ups and um, I do some curls. I do in the morning. I do this once a day, and and, uh, and s I used to do things like uh, sit-ups, but it seemed to aggravate it, so I stopped doing that. And now I just do uh, bends. I, I bend over and try to go as far down as I can, and I kind of let it stretch like that for a little while. Exercise and general conditioning are really important. A lot of times, you know, people want to know what exercise should I do for this one spot that hurts or that spot. And really, my answer is just general conditioning. Um, Weightlifting is good. Um, the best exercises when you lift weights are those that keep your elbow at your side. When your elbow's up in the air, you know, with mm -hmm. you're putting a lot of pressure on the neck and shoulder and upper back. So curls are okay, and triceps are good. And just you have a general conditioning exercise. Uh, even walking 20 minutes a day is perfect. I play golf once a week. Okay. So on those days you don't play golf, it's great to, you know, walk 20 oh, minutes do. a day, 30 minutes a day. I, perfect. I, I, and how's your sleep? Bad. Bad? <laughs> yes. How come? I think it's because there's always a little bit of pain somewhere, isn't it? It, it, it doesn't get me out of bed, but I, I keep, it doesn't, uh, I'm awake the whole night. Okay. One of the things that we always ask is about a sleep history because sleep apnea is very common in chronic kind of pain conditions. That's where we um, stop breathing when we sleep for a minute and, and wake up. I think it ag I aggravate my condition because I can't sleep on my back because of that. I have okay. to sleep on my side and I don't, I don't think it helps. Do you use a CPAP machine or um, there, there's an oxygen machine sometimes that's uh, prescribed for people who <coughs> stop breathing no, in their that. sleep? Use yeah, so that's another uh, you, you know reason to go to a physician or nurse practitioner or any kind of practitioner is to really get a full workup and kind of see all the issues that may be uh, that are treatable and reversible that may be um, involved. Can you tell me a little bit about your diet? Uh, except for my days off, it's pretty healthy. Okay, good. Uh, I I try to get the you know the usual things the fruits and the vegetables and uh, I don't I don't eat fast food. Rarely I do that, and, uh, and fried foods are limited. Right, and that's really usually the advice I give. I, you know, a common sense diet with five fruits or vegetables a day, right. and um, common sense, you know, a drink of alcohol for a woman. We get two if you're a man. Um, you know, a I'm cup of coffee is fine. <laughs> <laughs> so two is two uh, drinks a, a day is is the recommendation, which is a a shot of whiskey or a harder liquor or, or a beer or okay. f four, four to six ounces of wine. So um, that's, that's great. And how do you manage stress when you get stress in the day? Do you have a, a way of relieving stress? Um, well, up until last year, I walked my dog when that happened on the levee, but uh, my dog passed and I've stopped walking on the levee. So uh, Sorry to hear that. I kind of missed that. Maybe I should start doing that again. Absolutely, and, and even pushing the um, points with a breath is, is very important and can be good, uh, good stress management. Um, you have any questions about? Yeah, I do. Why is it that it seems there's only one side is affected? Uh, same thing in my back. It's the right side of my back. Yeah, many times there can be a trauma even from a long time ago that's acting, you know, it's a repetitive injury. So right. probably something happened to that side, whether it be compensation or, you know, you were talking about your posture with the stage fright how you kind of compensate for that emotional tension by kind of a posture that maybe wasn't optimal right. and could have led to damage over time. So you're right, there is probably usually some sort of either high, you know, high trauma or a more of a micro trauma or repetitive injury that can lead to dysfunction in one area. And that's where really where kind of like the body likes to pick on. And whenever we get injured, we don't sleep, we don't eat right, we don't exercise, we don't do the right habits then the mind isn't only in our brain, but we also kind of carry the mind in our body. And this is an area where, um, where uh, you know, we can kind of store a lot of emotions. It's, it's a pretty fascinating thing. Sometimes when we do a massage or if we do a trigger point, people will have a flow of emotions and they'll be like, wow, I was holding all that into this point. Um, so it's pretty fascinating stuff and why it's important how the mind and the body meet and why we ask all these questions about lifestyle and how we live our lives and the story that kind of led us to a to a certain place in time. Well, I think uh, maybe I should try uh, switching to the other side of the piano player because uh, I have to keep looking at him for the right changes. <laughs> maybe that's that's hurting my neck. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and we can also uh, get you feeling better. Um, there there are treatments. Uh, 
the New Orleans Musicians Clinic uh, has both conventional and complementary um, modalities that can be helpful for the neck as well as um, kind of that long-term relationship for health in general and, sc and health screening, appropriate health screening and stuff. So my recommendations would be uh, number one to do your acupressure points with uh, breath each day um, to resume your walking because that sounds like a great that was a good stress management. Um, if you get like angry, we recommend to write a sentence, you know, every day, something that makes us angry, or you know, if, if that may be a component of the, of the pain, to get a hug a day from a friend or an animal, <laughs> a pet, and uh, and um, I, I wish you the best of luck. And uh, so you, it was a pleasure pleasure to meet you, Tom. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, I appreciate it.